Grab beacons are a great way to generate income for capital pilots, making roughly 680 million per hour on average, away from high tier bis and mass multi-boxing of an alt army. And today I will show you how you actually run those in this in-depth guide. So if you want to find out how it works, go ahead and watch this video fully. But playing EVE alone sucks. So if you want to take part in an awesome community, fly fun ships, make something ISK and have genuinely a good time with constantly people around you to hang out with. So come and join Suspect today and fight under the banner of our great supreme leader, me. So come and join our Discord today. Anyway, on with the video. Hey guys, it's me, I for one. Recently, I made a video on crap beacons and today we're actually looking at how you run them. We will take a look at anything you need to know about them, from the ships to use, to the fits to use, to what kind of setup you will need, and how you can keep yourself safe while running them. So let's go ahead and go step through step through the entire process. Let's start off with what you will actually need to run those cramped beacons, and it's actually not that much that you will need even though that they are a very high income source. You will need one Sino alt with a max tank fitted Sino with liquid ozone as cargo hold, and one capital pilot with either a dreadnought or a super carrier. With the super carrier obviously being preferred because it can simply warp off if threatened. Technically you can also run them with two rockets, but I have no clue how to do that. So if you're on goons, I guess just go ask B Master 69 or something. I don't know what goons do all day long. The important thing about the capital pilot is it really doesn't matter what horde dreadnought you use. Or if you use a super carrier, the important thing is that you have decent support skills and in the best case tech 2 guns as well as tech 2 siege or tech 2 fighters in the case of a super carrier as that will significantly cut down in the time it will take you to run those crap beacons. So just make sure that you don't try to run those crap beacons while barely being able to even sit in a capital ship. The next point on the list is what ship do you actually use? Dreadnoughts are actually all fine, but navy dreadnoughts tend to do more DPS and have slightly more tanks, so they are actually preferred to normal dreadnoughts, but either of them will work. However, the really preferred ship here is a super carrier, as super carriers can warp off if they want to, although you shouldn't, as the moment you leave grid, your crap beacon gets blown up and will appear on that kill board, which is a slight issue. The only important part is that the super carrier uses long range fighters and should still manage to deal more DPS than a dreadnought. Should you go full DPS on a super carrier with no tank? Uh, no, really not. Especially if you do plan on getting saved by your lines when you do get tackled. Because if you have no tank, it's really hard to save you when you are getting attacked. But having at least more than 3000 DPS is also a good idea because having less is kind of gonna make it take forever. I actually linked an example fitting for a Phoenix Navy issue as well as for Nyx in the description of the video, but feel free to use whichever dreadnought you want and remember to actually use implants for them. The only important thing for dreadnoughts is that the NPCs can go out all the way to roughly 65 kilometers, so make sure that your guns or missiles have that kind of range. Also make sure to fit a smart bomb on dreadnoughts so you can deal with frigate spawns that will happen. The Phoenix Navy issue fitting I have linked is just your tank, it's just your standard tanky whore Phoenix. Well, the Nyx is a tank Nyx with one drone damage amplifier for more DPS and a network sensor array for faster locking. The NSA prevents you from warping for one minute. But I do trust my alliance and I fully believe that they can save me if, the, if push comes to shove. So that is why I go for that. So I also have the super fast lock speed while not losing on mid slots, which I can use for omnidirectional tracking links for more tracking and range. So let's say you got your ship, you got the skills to anchor the crab beacon, which is anchoring free, and you're stocked up on fuel, fighters, strontium and ammo or whatever your capital ship needs and are ready to go at this point. So what now? Well, there's three steps in preparation you should take. The first step is, if you're sitting in a dreadnought, have a reserve strontium stockpile in the system you're running them in, as you will burn through strontium very fast and you should still have enough fuel in your dreadnought so you can jump out if necessary. So having a reserve strontium stockpile is not a mistake at all and a very good idea to have. The second thing is make a bookmark mid space on which you want to run the crab beacon itself. It doesn't have to be of D scan necessarily as the crab beacon is either way directly warfable to from the overview. However, putting it in a separate place away from anything else, make sure that at least no one should be by accident just warping into you and if they do, you know that that person most likely shouldn't be there. And the third thing you want to do is warp your Sino also to that bookmark and move it 300 kilometers away from a capital ship, park it there and cloak it up. This is the single most important part of your setup, as the Sino is where your friends will jump to when they want to save you and by being 300 kilometers away from yourself but still on grid with your dreadnought, 
or super carrier. Your Sino can't be caught in a bubble when trying to warp down, but also is still outside of range from a Sino inhibitor, which will prevent you from lighting a Sino. Now, all you need to do is deploy the crab beacon from your capital ship and wait for it to anchor. You can run a total of 3 crab beacons with a 22 hour total cooldown starting from the moment your first crab beacon is deployed. Once deployed, you will have to link to it, preventing you for 5 minutes from warping off, but also giving you for that duration a resist bonus, making your ship even more tanky. After the 5 minute period, the enemies will start spawning and you simply kill them using your capital ship. While no enemies are on grid, a 10 minute timer on the crab beacon will proceed to go down and once it finishes, the crab beacon finishes as well, dropping loot, which you can pick up by looting the crab beacon itself. NPCs that spawn vary from frigates to battleships, all of them however having an exorbitant bounty between 1 million and 5 million is per ship. The final wave also has a chance to spawn a rogue drone carrier or super carrier, which both will drop officer modules, which can be worth anywhere from basically nothing, like the one I got, or all the way up to 30 billion is or more. Just don't be confused. Those officer spawns are very rare. After one more minute after the site is finished, the crab beacon itself will explode. Make sure you stay on grid until the crab beacon actually does explode, so it doesn't die to NPCs because if it does, it will show up on that kill bot, which we do not want as that is simply a dead giveaway that it is you specifically who runs those in that system at that time. The crab beacons themselves are not very difficult, they really aren't. However, the real risk is always being tackled. And for that, you want to take precautions. While I can't tell you how your line specifically handles it, the one thing that is essential is you want to ping early and notify your lines as early as you can the moment you get tackled. Make sure that whoever is supposed to know about it knows about it. Knows about the fact that you are actually in fact tackled. And don't wait until all the enemies show up and start killing you. So make sure you notify early and notify them with all the important information that you should send to them. Do not wait until you have bombers on top of you. The second you are tackled, tell someone. Important information includes who are you, what ship are you in, who is tackling you, do you have a D-scan. Make sure to actually send all of that information. Make sure to have all that information ready as soon as possible because the sites themselves are not very difficult. However, who wants to kill you is very difficult in fact to deal with and you can't really prevent it from happening at some point as shortly after you start the crab beacon, your location is actually highlighted on the map, that's actually kinda not cool but it is how it works. All in all, crab beacons are very good isk. The biggest benefit is that even for a safe setup you only need two accounts and a lot of trust into your lines and it allows you to make between 400 and 800 million isk power, which is on par or better than tier 6 abyss or about the same as triple boxing tier 5 abyss and frigates, however with a far higher risk with the ship that you're putting on the grid. But that risk can be heavily reduced by taking proper precautions and being in an alliance that can and wants to save you if you're in danger. Then again, you do have the benefit that the sites themselves are significantly more easily. And once again, running crap beacons comes down to one single thing. How much do you trust your alliance? And how much do you believe they are able to save you if push comes to shove? Anyway, this is actually all from me and I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, remember to leave a like, subscribe and tell me what you think about crap beacons in the comments or if there's anything I actually missed. Tell me that as well. But this is all from me and I see you next time.